What's going on, guys? One love out to everybody. We got UFC on ABC five. Emmett versus Tapora predictions. Bert down here, guys. We're gonna flash through this real quick. Jacksonville, Florida, over there starts at eleven thirty a.m. Now it was at twelve p.m. But uh, I believe the first fight here fell off the card against Tahara and Rodriguez. So we only got uh, so fourteen fights. We got thirteen guys. Um, let's knock this out real quick before I get started. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to this channel. Check out my Patreon account, guys. Like I said, I'm always gonna say, it. sign up to that Patreon account. It doesn't even cost much. It's like I believe it's like four ninety nine um, for one of the plays, and I believe ten ninety nine. So it's like uh, you know, it doesn't even cost that much. And then on both of the tiers, I, I put the predictions, um, the face of predictions on both of them. So even though you may be four dollars or ten dollars, you still get the face of predictions. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, on this card here, I'm going to make changes. So it's a tough card, and I just see a lot of fights here that can go either way, like usual. And once I see the wins and the face offs, I'll make my decision and place it on my Patreon account. So if you haven't signed up, sign up to that Patreon account, guys, okay? Also, you can donate to my channel too, to my PayPal account. A little $5 here, $10 here, whatever. You know, you can donate, it's very helpful, and I appreciate it, right? Um, also, check out Wayne Gitchy, which is me. Check out my other Patreon account here on my other channel, my Wayne Gitchy channel, for more health and fitness, more health and wellness, and spiritual kind of healing there, right? You guys want to lose weight. If you have imbalances, you know, like high blood pressure, um, diabetes, um, I could help you with that. You know, I can coach you through some of those things that you may be going through and give you, like, you know, like natural foods that you could eat, you know, to heal the body, right? Natural juices, right? So if you want to heal yourself and you want to be more healthier, check me out on that channel and I'll coach you through whatever problems you guys may have, in, right? It could be even mental problems too, which mental triggers your physical. So just give me a shout over there and I'm your man for that. All right. Um, let's jump into this real quick here, guys. Knock this out. Um, first fight here, we got Cody Brundage versus... Sid Cruz, Dumas. Um, this is a tricky one here, man. Uh, <sighs> these fights these are kind of tricky here, guys. A lot of these fights are tricky. But we're going to get through it, though. Um, Cody here, Bondage. He has more of a wrestling base, man. But he will go in there and throw the hand still. But he will drop the ball, though, man. He will drop the ball, man. And... His opponent here, Dumas. Dumas is gonna have seven inch of reach and two inch of height, which is massive, man. From what I see from this guy, he has potential. But against his last fight here against Josh Fred, you know what I'm saying? He didn't look good in that fight. And then, you know, I saw a little interview with him. He said he was going to some mental things. You know, and when you know when your mind is not right, you know, everything else messed up. You know, will will get messed up. Will will be a problem because mental triggers everything. You know what I'm saying? If your mental mind are running properly, then your physical not gonna work, right? So you're struggling with some mental issues, you know, when he went into that fight. That is that is why he may have looked the way he looked. Um but from his other fights here, even the continent series, you know what I mean, he looks um he looks like a, like a good prospect in a kind of way, you know, look like you know, still more to learn. But he has the tools though, you know what I mean? He's just the mental. So he, if he comes in there mentally, you know, on point, you know, most likely he'll, he'll, he could win this fight. You know, against guy Cody here, you know, he, he also lost in the contender series, you know. And um, lost against William Knight. So this is a guy that didn't even make it in the contender series. Look at Dumas, at least he won his contender series fight, you know. But like I said, man, he said he was dealing with some mental issues or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it seems like he, you know, he, he got through his problems and he's, and he's been working out, you know, on, on certain things to better himself, right? Mentally and physically, right? And also spir spiritually too. So um, this is a guy that uh, he has the tools, man. And he has a hell of a reach on him. So this one here, guys, I'm going to go with um, Dumas here. I'm going to say Dumas by KOTKO uh, in the first round, guys. But... Psh, there's no conflict in this one, man. This is a 50-50. And we could see the same thing happen again, you know. Cody could come in here and grind out a win, man. Put him, put Dumas on his back and even, probably even cancel made him. Strong possibility. You know what I'm saying? Or we can see Dumas come in here and then land a head kick. 
which Dumas does have a head kick for Sean Knuckles. So this is a fight where, guys, you know, you possibly could fade this one. Doing parlays, I wouldn't parlay, 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 parlay too much of Dumas in anything, man. So just, you know, it, 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 you just don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like both guys are kind of like up and down, you know what I mean? Dumas is still kind of slightly kind of greenish, but he has potential though, and he's still learning, you know what I mean? So you don't really want to count him out as yet, you know? You don't want to count anybody out. You know what I'm saying? He said he's dealing with some things, so let's see what happened. KOTKO by Dumas in first round, 50 50. Next fight, we got Jamal Emers versus Jack Jenkins. Um, we look at Emers here. Emers is a pretty well rounded guy, man. He's got the six inch of reach, which is a massive man, and three inch of height. Um, he beat an undefeated prospect guy here who was, well, on paper, was supposed to beat him. Um, um, ask, ask him off. He was supposed to win the fight, you know, on paper, but, uh, you know, Emmer show, show his experience, you know what I mean? So he's an experienced guy, a skilled guy. Um, he will drop the ball, though, you know, depending on who's fighting. Um, let me see here. Uh, he's going to lose one, win one kind of vibe here. So he haven't really lost back-to-back. -back. So he always lose one, and then he win. So... <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess coming up here is a loss for him then, right? <laughs> so he's like, like like I said, it's a lose, win, lose. I mean you can look at it like that, but you shouldn't really though. So he never he never lost back to back and he hasn't won back to back since twenty twenty. So we can look at it like that, but uh yeah, we have to be careful though. Um He lost against Evrosia. Julian Arosa in the contender series, you know, he got knocked out in that fight. Which Arosa is a guy who's known to get knocked out, and then he knocked out Emers, right? So, but again, we look at Emers, and Emers is a very experienced guy. He's opponent to Jack Jenkins, though. Jack Jenkins, um, he mixes it up, man. You know, he doesn't look bad, you know, striking, and he has a very aggressive ground game here. Um, he can get submitted, though, and he has heavy leg kicks, can get flat footed. He will look for a takedown, though, man. This is a guy that has a heavy ground game and push a heavy ground game, man. Um, sometimes, you know, it all depends on the matchup, you know what I mean? Um, Jenkins is, a, is, you know, he's he's not a... I wouldn't say that, you know, he's like a... He, I mean, he's an experienced guy, but not super experienced. You know, he won the Contender Series to beat this guy named Dan Shannis. Um This is a tough one here, guys, man. Um... I could see Jenkins winning this fight, and this fight is a 50-50 for me. I could see Jenkins actually winning. Though. That is why I say, guys, sign up to that Patreon account because I will make changes depending on the weigh-ins and definitely the face-offs. I'm going to go with Jamal, like I said, Jamal Emmers, but I'm kind of up in the air, man. 50-50 here. I do believe that Jenkins has a chance here, man, just because of the matchup. And what I've seen from Jack Jenkins, especially with the ground, it could give Emmers some problems, man. And it could be like a split decision. Jenkins here. So I could make changes. But I'm going to go with Emmers here by decision. It's 50-50. Not confident. Check out our Patreon. Next fight, we got Trevor Peak versus Chepe Mariscal. Um, Chepe here is a short notice here. Um, it's supposed to be a uh, victor. Um, what we see here from Trevor and Peak, man... Um, Chipper Peak is a physically strong dude, man. Um, you know, he has a decent takedown defense, too. He doesn't really accept the takedowns, man. He usually pop right back up. He's durable. Um, defense is kind of so-so. He's raw, though, man. Like, he has raw power, man. 100% finish rate. His cardio is on point. I mean, he, this is a guy that has the heart and just keep pushing forward, but he's, his technique is kind of... He can get a little sloppy at times, you know what I mean? But he just keep coming forward, and when he swings, he swings. But like I said, he's kind of raw, though. So, I mean, a very technical guy could give him problems. Um, a guy like Chepe, can Chepe do that? Um, Chepe coming from a different organization here. Has fought a lot of guys, though. Um, come with the LFA here and Cage Warrior. He fought a couple guys, you know, I'm Steve Garcia um Joe uh, jo Jonathan Brito you know what I mean um, he hasn't fought Bryce Mitchell which phew, that fight was kind of close he fight Gregory, Gal uh, Gregory Galipsi also um this is a fight here man where 
you know, with Chepper here, his, his wrestling base, you know, as a wrestling base on him, he, you know, he's not bad. He look for a takedown. Um, can I remember uh, Henry Sahudo, but not really. <laughs> you know, uh, he can get taken down, though, and he can get knocked out. In the first round, he can get knocked out. He been knocked out three times, man. But he's gonna have the experience, so though. This this is a fight where, again, check out the patron card. Could change her, but the one thing about this fight, I don't feel Chepe is very durable, though. You know what I'm saying? His, his name is Jose, but I guess Chepe is, is I guess the machine gun. Chepe is like his, I don't know. I guess his stage name. I guess. I mean, I have a mirror as Chepe, but I guess if you want to say Jose, <laughs> um, but. You know, Chep is, you know what I mean, he he has his skills and his and his and he's well rounded and you know he has experience, but man, he just he, he will go in there and come forward and just when the fight starts he doesn't really look for takedowns like that and if and peak takedown defense is not bad and he pops right back up, peak keeps going man and he swings heavy and if he connects to Jose and I can see Jose getting knocked out man. So I'm gonna go with Peak here for the win guys, but uh I'm not confident here in this one auto, you know, either. You know what I'm saying? So KOTQ first one by peak, but I'm not confident here, guys. And be careful with this one because Jose could pull a win here. Alright, just by experience, but I don't really see what Jose is gonna do to hold him down because from what I see from peak, he keep getting up, keep getting up, keep getting up, and his cardio is good and he throws heavy. And if he just connects to 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 um to to Jose, Jose could get hurt. Jose can get finished. So KOTQ first round by Trevor Peak. Next fight here, we got Zagas Zimolov versus Joshua Van. Um, uh, let's see here, guys. Uh, Zagas here, pretty well rounded guy. He's known more for his haircut, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. This guy's famous for the for his haircut. Uh, but he's skilled. He's a skilled fighter. You know, very well rounded. We look for the grind in the wrestling. Striking is not bad. Um, he got robbed a lot though. His last two fights he got robbed. Against Charles Johnson, robbery. Jeff Mol Jeff Molina, robbery. Both of those fights, he won those fights, man. Um, his opponent here though, Van. Van is making his debut here, coming from Fury FC. From what I see from him though, man, uh, Van is kind of, kind of wild. You know, can get taken down and that's the biggest thing I see. He can get taken down. And he stays on his back. 100% finish rate, raw, swing wild, heavy leg kick, but he get taken down though. And against Zagas, Zagas is going to take him down and most likely submit him in my opinion. So I'm going to go with Zagas here for the win. I'm going to say Zagas by submission in the first round. This is like a 60-40 for me. You know what I mean? I mean, with Van, like I said, he, he has potential. He's wild. You never know. You catch Zagas with a punch's chance there. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going Zagas submission first round, 60-40 there. Next fight, we got Tabitha Ritchie versus Gillian Robertson. This one is a tough one here too, guys. Like I said, most of the women fight. And some guys too, you know, if you're doing parlays, try to fade them out. Add them one and fade them next. So yeah, you know, if you're doing parlay, five, six, you take them out and add them to a different parlay. Keep switching around because, you know, anything could happen here. You know, we're looking at Ritchie here, BJJ Black Belt, House of Judo, Athletic. Um, physically strong. Um, she will look for the sweeps, the throws. She will look to take it down. Her striking is still in the works, but I feel her striking is better than Robertson. Um, Robinson here. Uh, she's got the four inch of four inch of height. Um, she wants the BJJ man. That's basically it. You know, and she she will look to strike, but striking is still in the works. I feel like Richie has a better strike in here. It's more athletic. She moves her own more. Pick the shots, even though you know I mean, I've been think. Oh no, I think both of the reach is pretty much this close. Yeah, maybe an inch off. Um, and with Robinson here, she wants more rear naked choke, and occasionally she will catch in an armbar. So most of the time, it's rear, rear naked choke she wants, man. So this is a tough one here. Robinson could get a submission, but Richie's ground game, BJJ Black Belt, is pretty good too, man. And Richie's athletic. That's the only one thing here. She's athletic and she's physically strong. And. Uh, she could gas out though. That's the next thing that Robertson take over. That's a possibility. Um, do I see that happening? Possible. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm going to go with Richie though. I'm going to say Richie by decision. It's 50 50. This one I'm not confident because Robertson could win. Check out the Patreon. I may make changes depending on what I see. 
Next fight here we got Rebecca versus Loki Ranimadov. Um, I believe I heard that Rabanov missed weight. I could be wrong. Uh, I heard that he missed weight. I never really checked the ways in weighing at the face up, but I heard that he missed weight though. Um, Rebecca here is a well rounded guy. Um, would push a very high pace, high wrestling pace. But he would gas out though, and he usually gas out after the first round. But he would still keep the pace and still grind for takedowns. Um, he's a good prospect, you know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Um, last two fights here though is not really a, a tough fight for him, man. Like against Rodrigo here, you know, just, the guy had no ground game. You know, it's pretty much a, a give me, a gimme, you know? And against Nick Fleury. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just easy, you know. I mean, there's there was points of that fight where Nick Fury probably could have won the fight, but he just wasn't throwing enough and he was getting taken down. It's an easy fight, you know. What I mean, against Rabanov, Rabanov's gonna have four inch of height and two inch of reach, and this guy come to fight, man. He's durable, never been finished, um, heavy hitter. Um, he would grind, look for takedowns, can get hurt in the foot, don't get days. And uh, and if you look at him, he, if he faced tough competition. You know what I'm saying? Zach Zane is a tough guy to fight. Even his fight against um, River Vix. Rib, Rib, uh, River Vix is, was a tough fight for him, man. Yeah, River, River Vix, what I see from him, he's a skilled guy. He's a good prospect, man. And he, and he, he you know, he put Robin off in some bad, um, in some bad situ situations, you know. You know what I'm saying? He hurt him in the fight. You know, I believe... I don't, I don't I believe I don't think he took him down, but Rabanov took him down though. But but I see from Rubavix, you know, these guys are good prospects. So I just feel that with Rabanov he's just been pushed a little bit more consistently. Um he missed weight though. I'm not sure how much he missed weight by, but I have Rabanov here for the win anyway. I must say Rabanov by decision, guys, but this is a 50 55 for me too. So it can go either way, and I may make changes depending on what I see on the wins and the face up. Cause like he, he see you know like how he miss weight, you know. What I mean, I see what he looks like on the scale, and I may switch to Rebic. So check out that face off predictions on my Patreon. I keep saying over and over again, man. All right. So rubbing off by decision. Next fight we got Randy Brown versus Wilton Thurman. Brown is gonna have the six inch of reach and three inch of height, which is massive. Very athletic guy, skilled guy. But he can get subbed and he can get hurt on the foot. All right, that's just what it is. But he's skilled though, depending on who he's fighting, right? Thurman, on the other hand, is BJJ black belt. Can get submitted, can get flat footed, you know, can get hurt. He's flat footed in front of you and he also, he will drop the ball. The thing about this fight that let me slide more towards Brown is that the athleticism and the movement of Brown. I feel Thurman is kind of like stationary there to get hit. But then, the PJJ black belt, man. I mean, Randy Brown doesn't defend the takedowns, and you get you get caught in something, you get submitted. You know what I mean? So this is a fight where it's 50-50, and it's, it's a tough one to call here. But I'll go with Brown, though. But Thurman, if he decides to push a heavy takedown game, could get a win here. But the thing about Thurman is that he would gas out when he push a heavy takedown game. He would have to finish Brown in the first round. If he doesn't get Brown out in the first round, then he's going to have some problems, man. So, so would you would probably say Thurman submission for in the first round probably, but uh, I'm gonna go with Brown here, man. I must say Brown by decision. Could even be a KOTQ by Brown too, but I must say decision by Brown. Not confident at all, man. All right. Next fight here. This is a tough fight. This is a tough card here, guys. Um, and the cage here is gonna be a bigger cage, so a lot more room to move. Next fight here we have uh, Neil Magny versus Philip Rowe. Yeah, they switch these fights around a lot. Um, Magny here again is a super experienced guy, but he's been submitted six times. You know he will find a way to win, man. He's a crafty dude. Will find a way to win. Experience, have mad cardio. Um, you can see here is on one of those win one lose one. He probably lost two in a row way back in two thirteen, but after that. You just been losing one and win, lose one and win couple, lose one and win, lose one and win. So now he's gonna, you know, he has one here. He won. He lost against Gilbert um, Burns. So you could say he's gonna win here. You can look at it like that, but you shouldn't though. <laughs> um, like I said, Magni is a very experienced guy, man. What we see from Phil Rowe, he's well rounded too, heavy handed. He's slick on the movement. He can drop the ball though. That's the thing. Hundred percent finish rate, but he will guess and he could drop the ball. Again, some um, Nico Price, man, he was kind of, you know, he, you know, he's a guy that, 
you look like he'd be winning and then he gets hurt and he just looks tired and then all of a sudden he just comes back so it's, it's very it's a very hard fight to choose here man because like i said you know the guy is skilled i mean i'm not here to disrespect anybody the guy is a skilled guy but you know there's certain things about him that you know he can get a hurt in a little small holes here and there like everybody has and a guy like magni would capitalize on that in my opinion but again roy could come in here though and then knock out magni during the first round so remember that you know or even submit magni magni been submitted six times <laughs> so is and both of them are pretty much even on the height and reach so both have 80 inch reach i'm gonna say magni man but again it's a fight where rory could possibly win and it's also in orlando and rory home to favorite I believe rory trainer 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 at orlando there yeah i must say um magni man but magni never lost two in a row in a long time too but like i said rory you know what i mean he'd be looking good and then he just gasses out and with neil magni neil magni is a cardio machine and he's gonna keep going going it's a three-round fight but you can keep going and going if, if Rory get tired in there there's gonna be in problems we can see Neil Magnet just hopping on his back pulling him to the ground put him against the cage and beat him up punch 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 elbow 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 then just repeat pick him up slam him punch punch even though Rory has a submission game but when you start getting a hit like that and getting and get your back half took with a half guard in and getting a hit or, or a half hook you know what I'm saying? You know, it can wear and tear on you. You know what I mean? It, I mean, jujitsu don't really mean much anymore. So I'm going to go with Magna here. I'm going to say Magna by decision. Not confident, guys. Next fight here, we got Brandon Allen versus Bruno Silva. Brandon Allen is a pretty well rounded guy, too, man. We look for the submission. Um, experienced guy. Scramble well. I mean, this guy's in a pretty good winning streak right now, man. It's five winning streak, man. And beat Andre Munez, which a lot of people thought that Munez would actually win that fight. He actually submitted him. Which Muniz is a BJJ black belt. I feel I think that Allen's a bad black belt also. Um, his opponent here, Bruno Silva, though, very heavy-handed guy, but he's kind of one-dimensional. You know, he can get taken down, and he can get submitted, man. And he swings well at times, and he can get flat-footed, but he's powerful though. Pack a lot of power. Now, if he's able to come in here and catch Allen with a punch, he could win. He could knock out Allen because we see Allen get knocked out before. But the thing about this fight is that man is just Bruno's takedown defense. He's been submitted six times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Allen has like over like twelve by submission. You know what I mean? It's like and even on the striking, you know, Bruno basically got knocked down by Gerald Merchant, and Gerald Merchant then submitted him. So Gerald Merchant is not much known for his striking. It's more his ground game, his submission, and he knocked down Silva. So I mean, Silva improved with the brand with the Brad Tavares fight. He looks good in that fight against Brad Brad Tavares. You know, what I'm saying my hats off. You know, he looked very good in that. Came in there and gotten yeah, actually got a knockout in that fight. But man, it's just just on paper, man. It's just I don't know, man. I just feel like Allen is just it's just a more well-rounded fighter here, man. So again, Bruno Silva could come in here and catch him. Remember that this this guy has a lot of knockouts, man. He has over like 20 odd knockouts, and you know it doesn't take much. And we see Allen can get knocked out knocked out twice man that's the thing about these matchups you know chris curtis knock him out and sean strickly knock him out all in the second round so this is the thing about these fights and bruno silver is known to finish you either in the first or this usually usually in the first round he usually finish you so if he doesn't get out um brandon in the first round then he's gonna be in problem all right so i got allen here by submission um what i have here Allen in by submission in the second round, guys. All right. I say 60 40, 60, 60 for Allen, 40 for Silver here. All right. Um, next fight here, guys. We have uh, we have uh, David Anama versus Gabriel Santos. Um, Anama here, man. This guy's uh, this guy's a little phenom, man. Four inch of reach, two inch of height, durable, well rounded guy, but will gas out, but he will keep a pace on you, and even when he's hurt, he will keep on going, man. You know what I'm saying? I fight against Nate, I mean, he could have won that fight, man, but he was just so gassed out in that fight. Um, he, there are some things about him that's kind of greenish. You know, it's kind of wild and just, we'll just go crazy with everything. Never been finished. And a guy like Gabriel, man, Gabriel Santos, just a super freaking experienced, well-rounded BJJ freaking, this guy's pretty good, man. 
against Lauren Murphy, phew, they robbed him. In that. I, no, don't get no. When I say that he robbed him, I like Lauren Murphy. You know what I'm saying? Lauren Murphy is a good prospect to me, man. And I'm not favoritism against nobody. You know, you know what I mean? When I say a guy, he lose, it doesn't matter. It could be my brother. It could be anybody, my cousin. It doesn't matter who it is. If the guy beat him, I'm going to say, yo, this guy beat you, man. I'm not favoring anybody because oh, I just like them. Lauren Murphy, in a fight, I would want Lauren Murphy to win. But I felt Gabriel won that fight, man. That's, I, I didn't see Murphy did. Murphy didn't do enough in that fight to win it. In my opinion, he was getting taken down and controlled the whole fight. It should be unanimous. It should be a unanimous decision for Gabriel Santos, in my opinion. You know, Santos striking is on point. He can get hurt though, but he recovers well. Um, his takedowns are good. His ground game is good. Um, it was a, it was a clear victory for Gabriel against Murphy. <laughs> you know, I think that fight was in. I think it was in England, man. I think I think that's a problem too. It was in the UK. Bam. Yep. And uh, Murphy is from her, the UK. Favoritism, you know, happens, guys. Um, I like in Gabriel here, man. I just feel Gabriel is... is. I feel Gabriel just... He's kind of more... Uh, the more well-rounded, but David and Nama is well-rounded too. But I feel Gabriel Santos is just more sharper. He's more cleaner. You know what I mean? With, with David, he will lose composure as the fight goes on. You know, it's like he's, he will be good in the beginning and then after a while he just start like, I don't know, he's get tired, he's falling down, he's just making a lot of mistakes. Santos keeps it tight all the way, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go with Santos here, guys. I'm going to say Santos by decision, but don't get me wrong, you know, a guy like David could come in here and get overhand. He, he could get a knockout. It's possible. So be very careful, you know? So, but I like in Santos by decision, though, all right? Next fight here, guys. We have um, Jason, T Jason, Justin Taffer versus Austin Lane. Um, this is a barn burner here, guys. Um, uh, Taffer, one hundred percent finishing rate, and uh, Lane, one hundred percent finishing rate. Both these guys pop power. Um, with Justin Taffer here, though, I feel Justin Taffer is a little bit more sharper and cleaner with the punches. You know what I mean? And with Austin here, come for more football kind of vibe, which you know I believe he lost to um, Greg Hardy. Did I say that? Yeah, against Greg Hardy here. Um, he can have a six-inch reach and six-inch height, which is freaking massive. Which I'm gonna look on the face-offs and see, you know, if I see anything that could change my mind on this. I could, you know, I, I I'm going for tougher here, but I, I'm gonna check that out and see if, if I, you know, have a change of mind. Um, but. You know, with 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 friggin' Lane here, you can get knocked out, and I, I just feel like Tafo is a little more sharper, but then the reach and the height. But if you look at Lane, he doesn't really use his reach and height good. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like he's like a, <laughs> you know, like a Muhammad Ali or or Floyd Mayweather. You know, a different sport. But I'm saying a striking, you know, points. You know, he's like on the outside, like using the jab nicely and setting up from the outside, and you, and you try to come in his counter, and you, you know, what I'm saying. He's not really doing any of that, you know. You know, not not like a Tyson Fury kind of vibe. He has there. He's, he's, he's not doing that. He can be a guy where his hands just flare up in the air, and then he, you know, you just close a distance quick and take him down, or or you close a distance and catch him with a body or catch him with a overhand hook. Even though you have the shorter reach, he's been knocked out three times too. And I'm tough. I've been knocked out once, I believe. Um, both both are finishers though, but I'm gonna go for tougher here, guys. I'm gonna say tougher by KOTKO in the first round. But be careful because the guy has a six inch reach and six inch height. But I say he doesn't really use it well. But you never know, man. You know, guy could come in and just land a kick and catch his um tougher in the head, man. <laughs> it's a barn burner fight, guys. You gotta be careful, all right? Tougher by kill T kill first round. Next fight here we got Rebus versus Barbo, um, co main event here. Um, Rebus BJJ black belts. Um, she well rounded, coming out of my American top team there. Um, she's hateable though, man. She can get hurt on the foot, man. But uh, you know, what I mean, she she will hang in there, and sometimes you can finish her. You know, what I mean, but her BJJ is pretty good, and if she gets you down, she'll control you. You know, from what I see from my last fight, her striking, you know, kind of got a little more, 
you know, a little more tighter. You know what I'm saying? Her defense got a little better. You know, she wasn't taking as much hits and she was recovering quicker. You know, she, she was avoiding a lot of the hits then. You know, being finished twice early by knockout, KOTQ, but her striking was a little bit more better than her other fights when she fighting Arojo here. You know, she looks, I thought Arojo would be the better striker, but um, Amanda Rippers was out striking her, so I was, you know, I was pretty impressed with that. You know, she looks, she was looking good like she'd been working on her striking, right? And her takedowns were good, and then you know, the ground game is hers, you know what I mean? Coming to the American top team, you know? Good camp, you know, off Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and even the striking too, but mainly for the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know what I mean? Her opponent here, Barba, though, I, I felt Barba, I'm like I said, guys, you know, I'm not favoriting anybody here. I felt Barba lost her last fight, though, man, against Lee. I feel Andrea Lee won that fight, man. There's like clear win, you know. What I see from Barba is like in that fight, she's smothering her punches, running forward. Lee was hitting her. She was landing shots, but Lee was taking her down consistently. You know what I mean? And when I see that, it's like, you know, there's no, like, um, pinpoint accurate strikes from Barbara that's landing clean. And Rebus doesn't do well when, when, when women are pinpoint accurate. You know, when they just set up from the outside and bam, and catch, you know, like Marina Rodriguez, she struggle with against that. Caitlin Chukagan, she struggle against that because those women are pinpoint accurate with the strike. You know, we look at uh, Marcy Barber from what I've seen. She kind of smothered down the punches, them, and kind of get kind of wild at times. And, you know, I mean, she was getting taken down. But again, you know, they, they look like they like Marcy Barber here. Again, guys, favoritism goes a long way, man. And sometimes the fights come real close. And if they favor that, that fight up to win, you know, they will win on the judges' score, on the judges scorecard, you know what I mean? So is this one this fight where they're going to favor Barber over Rebus or Rebus over Barber? Because this could be a very close one here. But I just feel that, from what I see from Barbara, her last performance just didn't look good. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, Rebus is going up in um, weight here, you know what I mean? But still, she has fought 125 against a road and she proved herself that she's good there. You know what I mean? She has, yeah, she's been at 125. She was at 115 against Verna here. You know, but she fought two fights already at 125, you know, so it shouldn't be a problem here, you know. Barbara could be the bigger woman here, frame-wise. But, uh, you know, it's just what I say from Barbara, just can't get taken down and controlled on the ground, man. And BJJ Rebus, BJJ Black Belt, Black American Top Team, man, they, they, oh, they're going to give her a problem, man. You know what I'm saying? And with Marcia Barbara, we've seen all the time against women that are Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, even Roxanne Mother, Mother Fori, you know, doesn't do too well. I feel Andrea Lee should have won that fight there. I'm going to go with Rebus here, guys, but I'm not confident in this pick here. I just feel Rebus is just. I feel Rebus is just more, more technical there as far as like her 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 skills in the BJJ stands out a lot more. Striking wise, could be even here, but I just feel like even with Marcy Barber striking, it gets wild. I feel Rebus striking is a little more tighter, man. But I'm gonna go with Rebus here. I'm gonna say Rebus by decision, 50-50, man. I'm not confident in this at all, guys. Like I said, women fights, be careful. If you're parlaying, sometimes it's good to leave them out. Add them in, leave them out, man. Mix it up. All right, main fight in the card. I got Josh Emmett versus Leah Tapora. Very good fight here, guys. It's actually a good card, man. Um, Emmett here, man. You know, this fight uh, is kind of tricky, you know, by just looking at it. You know, like I said, you always want to watch fights, even some interviews. Very important to watch the fights. Go back and watch the fights of these guys, man. And match them up. Um, by just looking at the, the fight, you go, oh man, oh, we got Tapora all day. That's not the case, man. Um, what we see from Emmett here is last fight against um, Yair Rodriguez. He struggled in that fight because of the striking of Yair Rodriguez, the elusiveness, the footwork, the kick, the speed, and by the timing. Emmett couldn't match that, man. He's just way too quick, way too accurate with the kicks. And all those body shots destroyed Emmett. The body shots is what killed Emmett. Yair Rodriguez was quick in that fight, man. Quick in that fight, man. Um, and the, 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 the accuracy of the strikes is just, even though he submitted Emmett, but he beat him up on the foot, man. <laughs> and then the submission just came easily, right? Um, Emmett takes a lot of damage in his fights, though, but you, he doesn't really lose so much, guys, though, as you can see. You know what I mean? He's a consistent guy, you know? And he beats some good guys. Danny Gay, uh, Kevin Cutter. His opponent here, Tapora, though, what I see from Tapora, man, um, he's a good prospect, and... This is what made me kind of change my mind because I was, I was kind of going for Tapora by just looking at the, you know, by just looking at it, 
but uh, you know Bryce Mitchell was putting on him in the first one and Bryce Mitchell was putting it on him with the striking and even taking him down Gerald Herbert heard him in that first round and even against I believe Zalal, um, Zalal fighter I believe Zalal even took him down I believe Zalal kind of heard him in that fight too with Emmett he doesn't want to do that and with Topora here good prospect skilled guy man well rounded but he's hateable and he can get taken down and he can get hurt also on the foot and a guy like Josh Emmett this fight here kind of fits Josh Emmett for the win it kind of favors Josh Emmett because the poor is more heavy with the hands kind of don't really move around as much you know and I favor Josh Emmett because Josh Emmett is there in the pocket to take your head off and Josh Emmett hit Yair Rodriguez with some good shots man I believe if Josh Emmett connect with those shots like what it did on Yair Rodriguez against the Poro, I think the poor could be in problems in this fight and like I said by looking at it you go oh, we, I feel that you know that talk to poor win all day but I'm kind of liking Josh Emmett here man I think just the, the match up here and the skill set of both guys um, the tools that the poor come with you know he got good takedown he got good submission games he got power on his hands but he it's kind of his striking is kind of um it's kind of predictable you know what I mean it's not like Yair Rodriguez Yair Rodriguez gave Josh Emmett problems because Yair Rodriguez was unpredictable. You know, too much kick coming from everywhere. Um, the question mark, kick, body kicks. It's too much kicks coming from everywhere. And then the hands were coming with it. You know, the kicks set up, punches, punches up the kicks. It's too much to to, to uh, process. You know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, with the poor, he's just going to be there in front of him. Maybe set up a, maybe go for a job, maybe overhand, maybe just coming with an overhand, maybe uppercut. That favor Josh Emmett because he sees that all day and he faces guys who are like that all day. Kevin Carter, Danny Gay, it's pretty much all day. You understand what I'm saying? So it's nothing new for him. He's seen that already. And Josh Emmett is very, very experienced. To Poro, I mean, yeah, he fought some, some okay guys, Bryce Mitchell, Jai Herbert, but now these guys are really. You know, really top top level guys, man. I mean, maybe Bryce Mitchell kind of in a kind of sense, but still, you know, Bryce Mitchell is still kind of one dimensional, kind of way. Striking is not really all there, man. You know what I mean? And and like Jai Jai Herbert is up and down. You know what I'm saying? His, his wins and losses. Ryan Hall is kind of out. You know, you know Demon Jackson. Kind of like slightly, you know. You know I mean, um, Demon Jackson is a good is a good guy. Probably like, well, that's one good guy. And, Z and Zalal is not even in UFC no more. <sighs> you know what I mean? He's in some SCL. So it's been out of UFC. So I'm gonna go with um Emmett here, guys. I'm gonna say Emmett by KOTQ in the first round, guys. I'm not confident. And that fight for me is a 50-50 because yeah, of course, you know, a guy like Tapura could win. You know what I'm saying? He's a good prospect. Like I said, I'm not counting him out, but I just feel like this fight favors Emmett because of the skill set of Tapura. You know what I'm saying? It's like tailor made for him because there's not much unpredictable things. You know, are gonna come flying his way. He's seen everything already. With Yair Rodriguez, super unpredictable, man. I mean, Yair, Yair, on that fight with Yair Rodriguez, he was Yair Rodriguez was all over the place with those kicks. You know, I'm saying everywhere is like he didn't even see those kicks coming. They were so quick. <laughs> he can't see those coming. He couldn't put a read on it. So, like I said, Josh, I met by KOT in the first round, guys, and. That's a prediction right there. Quick look at the odds here, real quick, guys. So we're working with. See what we work and what. Uh, man, crazy odds. Muslim, sure enough. Okay, that's definitely not a nut card. That was last week card. Um, up and down here. Okay, Josh Emmett, underdog. Mm, Topor is this high? <laughs> oh, man, these guys are nuts, dude. Topor should not be no negative 350, guys. The guy is a good prospect, but does it make any sense for Josh Emmett's resume? Tapora shouldn't be so high. That's freaking ridiculous. I'm liking Emmett here. Be careful. Cody Brothage. <laughs> Cody Brothage and Dumas is an even fight, guys. Cody shouldn't be this high either. It's an even fight, man. That's off. I'm going with Dumas. Be careful. Jamal Emmers and Jack Jenkins. Jamal Emmers is 200 or something. I feel Emmers is a little too high too. Um, I have Jamal Emmers winning, but be careful because Jenkins could pull off a win here, guys, just by with the takedowns and the grinding. Trevor Peak and Jose, I don't disagree with this one because what we see from Jose is a little more kind of experience, a little more, um, he's a little bit more like not so green, you know. Peak is kind of a green kind of, you know, kind of wild still, but he possesses 
you know the tools to beat Jose so um, yeah even fight Zagas and Van Zagas is 200 and something uh, I don't disagree with that I feel that Van is kind of green man and Zagas has the tools he has that one skill set which is his takedowns and submission to beat Van man I don't disagree um, this fight is scratch Gillian Roberts Richie close to even got Richie slight favorite here but this fight is an even fight to me man either way guys um, Luki and Rebecca they got Rebecca 135 um, this fight here to me is an even fight also guys I like Luki he's an underdog I know I'm, I know I'm, I know I'm, I know I mispronounced that but uh, yeah yeah this is an even fight so, so be careful Re Rebecca or Ra Romanoff could could win the fight be careful Randy Bone 250 no, I would put Randy Brown so high, guys, because Wilton Thurman, BJ Blackbird could get a submission here, man. He could get a submission, man. So this fight to me is very close to even. I may edge Brown a little bit, favorite, but be careful. Neil Magny 175, Rory. I, I don't really disagree with this. I feel Magny should be the favorite, you know, but Rory could be a little underdog here. You never know. But I feel Magni should get this win here, but Magni will can't drop the ball, man. So be careful. Brandon Allen, Bruno Silva, Brandon Allen, 200 and something. I kind of don't disagree with this, man. I feel Allen has everything here to win this fight. I feel like he's more of a the guy here, man. So, yeah. David Nama, Gabriel Santos. Gabriel Santos is 200 and something. A little bit too high for me there, but I'm liking Gabriel though, but I feel like he's a little bit too high. Nama could have a puncher chance, but what I see from Gabriel, that guy's on point, man. That guy's a very skilled fighter, but you know, and anything could happen, man. Could just be the matchup. Justin Taffo and Lane. Ah, uh, man. I go, I go even on this, man. Taffo, you know, yeah, I mean, I have him winning, but Lane is the hide and reach could play a problem, man. So be careful with this one, guys. Rebus 210 and Barbo, man. I feel Rebus is a little too high here, guys. A little too high here, man. Um, a little too high, man. This should be a closer fight, man. Barbara could win here, man. But I just feel Rebus is just... She has more skills there as far as the ground game goes. Like, whatever Rebus has is just a little bit more dominant than what Barbara has. I feel Barbara is a little bit more like... Can get taken down. The striking is not really all that. And look at Rebus. You know, Rebus striking getting better. And she has a massive experience on the ground. Actually, I, I wouldn't really put it for 210. I'm, I'm still a favor her though, but it's a closer fight though. So be, so be careful. Like I said, the women fight, you gotta be careful. Man, because Barbara could edge with a split decision and win. Or a split decision robbery. Be careful. Alright. That's it right there, guys. Those are my odd breakdowns there. Check out wingitchy.com. <laughs> wingitchy.com. <laughs> check that out too. Also, check out my Patreon account. Like I said, I'm going to go put those Patreon plays in right now. All the face off plays. Watch the weigh ins and face offs and create that. So, if you guys haven't signed up, sign up for that, man. I'm telling you, it doesn't cost that much. You know, I believe one tier is $4.99 and the next tier is $10.99. And both the four nine nine dollars ten ninety nine. I put this there on the face of predictions and vote for them. So if you sign up for the four dollar one, you're gonna still get the face of predictions, man. That's a good deal, huh? So basically you're only playing four dollars, man. That's it, a month. That's all you guys playing. You get all my face of predictions. So the the plays that I switch will be on the Patreon account and usually the ones that I switch are usually the ones that are hidden. Alright, are the ones that come in. Okay? So Thank you guys for all the support, all the, um, the donations, and the patrons who sign up. I really respect that. I appreciate the love. And uh, yeah, man, let's keep this um, let's keep this ball rolling and see what we can do here, man. Let's see what happened here, man. You know. So check out the Patreon. Also check out when you get your Patreon and one level to everybody. Oh,